Hi everyone, it's Philip Ackerman Leist and I wanted to run through this document a little bit with you. Some of you um, certainly have questions about what to prepare for, what to think about, what to bring, and just want to make sure certain things uh, have you know, sort of risen to the top here for you in this particular document. Um, first of all, as we start out, you've got a lot of background uh, reading on the Tyrol, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, what you might do is go to the end of this document and actually focus in some. So you've got at least a basic understanding of the role that um, the American poet Ezra Pound played in 20th century poetry um, and the other arts as well. So I hope you will take time to do just a little bit of that at least uh, so you can get a sense of um, you know so much of uh, the tradition from which uh, the Brunenberg experience stems and so it's a very important piece. If you were to have time I'd love for you to read Mary de Rakowitz's Discretions. You'll meet Mary there uh, who is Pound's son um, as it states here and I um, hope you'll take a little bit of time to do that. You're getting a really good sense now of the culture from the readings you're doing so not going to emphasize anything there. We'll emphasize here that you know chances are we'll have some really hot and muggy days um, but we'll also be high up in the mountains and um, anything can happen at any time so just think layers and also think light and um, do your best there. If you have to get to Brunnenberg on your own, if there's no way that we can wait for a delayed flight uh, that you have or some other kind of issue, um, you know, don't panic. It's certainly feasible. It's not all that hard. Got the instructions for you here, and um, you know, you may not be able to make it uh, the same day if you run into plane problems, um, but you might. And um, you know, so just you know, enjoy the ride because it is beautiful by way of train and um, not too complicated. And we'll make sure you get to Brunnenburg one way or the other. Um, and I'll also give you information for contacting me um, in case that happens. And in, um, you should make sure you keep my cell phone number handy. And um, I'll give that to you again, but it's 802-353-0965. And I think one of the best ways to reach me is going to be by text. Um, if you've got to call me, you can do that, but I'm going to have pretty limited minute, minutes um, there. Uh, but the texting is probably a good way to, to catch me. And so I will give all that information to you again so you've got it readily accessible as you start to travel. Um, you know, I don't think things are going to make it if they're being mailed to you in many cases, given the short time that we're there. So um, you probably don't need to focus on that too much. And I um, just want to make sure you understand the croft, uh, the farmhouse where you'll be living. Um, it's not necessarily um, a place where you'll have a lot of privacy, but you will have um, a comfortable, uh, really beautiful spot in which to reside while you're there in the castle. And you're right in the midst of the museum. Um, and you certainly feel the age of the space. So I think you'll really enjoy that um, particular spot. Um, and we should have pretty decent supplies of hot water while we're there. Um, but again, it is solar, and so we go with the flow and go with what's available. As for the um, the meals, uh, there's a real conglomeration of what we'll be doing. We'll be eating together in some cases. Um, it, well, in almost all cases, I should say. What I meant there was we'll be eating on site there in the common kitchen and cooking some meals together. Um, breakfast, uh, most of them will be at Brunnenberg Castle and we'll have things there for everyone and we'll try to make all of that a cultural experience and uh, we'll be eating out um, you know some along the way as well and um, you know with the um, budget right now you know if we're careful we'll be able to cover most of your meals in one of the initial documents and noted that um, you know we needed to be prepared for up to three lunches and three dinners on your own um, but I think we're going to be able to make it work so we'll be able to capture um, you know quite a few of those especially the lunches and then um, you know it's always fun to be able to have dinner on your own sometimes just to get some space and some breathing room I don't think we'll be using the phone too much, but do make sure that uh, friends and family, family in particular, um, can contact you here. And remember the six-hour time difference, so it's very important that people have this number so that they can reach you. Also my number, obviously, um, if there is an emergency. Let's try to keep it to an emergency if we can, please. Um, and let's see, energy consumption, we don't have to worry too much in the summer about that. You will have the blankets, linens, and a towel. I'm not sure you want to bring a sleeping bag unless you're traveling elsewhere. Um, 
I, you know, I just, I, I don't think that's worth it. Um, but that's, that's your call. I will be collecting a damage cleaning deposit. What I will do is actually take that out of our group funds. And, um, you know, it's just important to do that. We've had funny, odd, funky, not so nice things happen at various points there. So, um, that deposit's there. So you need to make sure that your room is completely clean and everything is, um, in good shape when you leave. Laundry, I believe now actually this has changed uh, to two euros and um, it's no longer three. Um, and so you can pay um, on a per load basis there for the laundry. Um, uh, chores, we don't have to worry about too much. We are going to do a work day because it's um, such an important part of the Brunenberg experience and gives you a real feel. And we'll have a wonderful lunch and a wonderful dinner as part of that. Um, and so you, know, you, you work for and earn your meals in that case. Um, and so that'll be a special time, as I'm sure you'll see. Um, the schedule I keep saying over and over again, it's a jazz composition. We have to improvise and, um, you know, that means that not just that we have to work around problems, but also uh, we fortuitously find out certain fun things are happening and we want to grab onto those. Um, so cost in the South to roll right now, Europe in general, things are fairly expensive. You'll find some things are less expensive, um, but um, do be prepared for a little bit of shock there. As far as um, money, I just want to make it clear here that, um, you know, I obviously we'll be picking up um, quite a few of your expenses by way of what you've already paid. And so, um, you know, but you should have some extra cash available. I like having a diversity of possibilities. Um, you know, you can work with your ATM card or your um, credit card. You want to make sure that that's approved for international use before you leave. It's a lot easier before you leave. Also bear in mind that the magnetic stripe that we use is used in Europe. It is accepted, um, but every now and then you'll run into a place where it um, doesn't work because they actually have a chip in their credit cards and those chips aren't going to appear in American cards um, for a little while. There are four companies I just recently found out in the U.S. that have those cards with chips. Um, you know, so in most cases you're going to come out okay with the magnetic stripe um, credit card or ATM card, but also, you know, it's a good idea to have some cash and um, if you want to do the old-fashioned traveler's check route, um, that's fine too. I'll be utilizing those to carry the cash over for our trip. Um, so they still work. They, um, <laughs> they're not as common as they used to be. Um, so anyway, um, traveling on your own is not so much an issue for us, but I do want to hit here what to bring. So it's your call as to how you want to pack. The one request I have is make sure you have a backpack that you can fit things in um, for an overnight of two nights. Um, so a double overnight, in other words. That's the main thing is you've got a comfortable pack that will carry all your, your stuff. And it doesn't have to be a lot of stuff, remember that. Um, but you do want rain gear, you want layers. And of course, as I keep saying, hiking boots, hiking boots, hiking boots, break them in, break them in, break them in. And with um, hiking socks, you know, remember very often, it's nice to have a thicker pair with some liner socks on the inside to prevent blisters. Um, outerwear in this case, you know, it is nice to have um, some sort of a wool sweater or a fleece. Don't use cotton, thinking it's going to keep you warm if you get wet, please. Um, so either the wool or the fleece, um, just have one of those garments and a raincoat and perhaps one... Um, one warm shirt, uh, be it a thermal shirt, something like that, and make sure you got at least one pair of long pants. Um, that would be good. And um, long underwear, you don't need to worry about. Um, and you'll be fine there um, in general. So uh, rain gear, as I mentioned, don't need to bring um, work clothes and leather gloves. Just have something you don't mind getting dirty um, You know, for one day that we're there. And the pocket knife, as you know, um, you know, is more of a hassle these days. That's your choice. Having a flashlight is a really good idea for getting around the castle at night. Having a water bottle, um, something along those lines is a good idea. And you can also pick up something when you're there. Traveler's wallet, keep those items under your garments um, in most cases. Once we get to the village in Dorf Tirol, it's fine. But, um, you know, in general, please travel safely with your documents, especially your passport. Don't lose it, please. It will make life so much easier if you don't. 
And, um, you know, I would recommend bringing a swimsuit. You just never know what might happen. Um, and again, you know, I'd like you to bring a laptop or a tablet um, so that you can be utilizing that for um, uh, capturing, archiving, and in some cases actually uploading some of your images. And um, the internet connection uh, will have a, a good connection, but it's not one where everybody can be on all the time at the same time. So, um, you know, just remember th that uh, we'll be sharing that time and obviously hope that you have something to capture the images with, be it a smartphone or and or a, a camera, video camera. Um, you know, your choice as to what you decide to use there. So I think that rounds this out fairly well. There are the readings that you might take a minute to read and look. Um, and in this case, uh, you don't have to sign this, this contract. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've got a very responsible group here with the graduate students, and so I think we're fine there. So thank you for everything, and once again, look forward to it.